my youngest, they were working on the sh sound and he's in kindergarten and he's like, I know a sh word. <laughs> <laughs> And his teacher like was like, Shh, don't tell all the other kids. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Sedona. I'm Rebecca. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Uh, we are beyond socially distant tonight. So Ross is in the oh, Northeast. I'm the Central. Technically, Sedona's mountain. Yeah, right now. Yeah, and right then now. Rebecca's in California. <laughs> so we literally have all four time zones tonight. So there's on a flip flops. You never know. Yeah, I had to think about what time of year it was. So right. I was in Scottsdale one year, and daylight savings time happened, and I was like, "What do we do?" And they were like, "Nothing." And I was like, oh. "I feel the same." <laughs> Wait, do you flip flop? No. no, you don't. You're on the East Coast. Oh, Never mind. Okay. No. Time zones are dumb. Yeah. Proceed. Okay. Well, no, they're not dumb. Daylight savings time is dumb. Time zones are important. The you sun travels I mean. differently. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Sorry, the middle school science teacher took over but there for the a second. But the fact that daylight savings affects things differently is dumb. Yes. Daylight savings time is dumb. Like, yeah. yeah. There's news because There's... it is to you, the listener and viewer, it is old news. It happened today for us. So we have been smashing through recording shows. It's the weirdest thing. That we're like, we're still getting used to like sending emails to people and saying, hey, do you want to be on a show with us? And a lot of them went, yeah. Because a lot of people have been like, ah, oh, no, maybe in the future. And we still get some of those. But a lot of people said yes lately. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are very happy that Rebecca and Stone came back. Um, separately, but together. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I know there's, like, brother from another mother, but what do you do for girls? Or do you have to? Sister, sister from another mister? <laughs> I don't know yeah. if that applies. I don't know either. Let's anyway. just go with mixed. This is a mixed, like, a mashup. <laughs> mixed yeah. Mashup. Mashup yeah. sounds better than mixed. Yeah. Um, so, so the news is that there's a new Ford Bronco, kind of. Kind of. Well, there are some new parts. So let's be clear. So the Bronco Everglades has debuted, which they've been teasing for what, like two months now, which is uh, a, you know, very, very short period of time in Bronco years. Right. So <laughs> it's, uh, it, it starts with the Sasquatch and yeah. then basically adds a whole bunch of appearance stuff. So roof rails, wheels, um, fender flares that aren't Bronco Raptor fender flares, but they are bigger fender flares um it adds a bumper with a 10,000 pound worn winch with synthetic line and there's some unique graphic things going on the front fender that uh well, don't really have any importance whatsoever other than you can tell it's never laid from the side um the grill is unique and then the most exciting things are that they actually put vents on the axles, the transfer case, and the transmission so that you can go through deeper water. And they put what's probably the best factory snorkel of all time on the thing. Why do you think it's the best? It is reversible. And it's not reversible in the sense that, like, when I've had snorkeled vehicles, you literally take the inlet and you unscrew the little hose clamp and you spin it around and you screw the hose clamp back on. This one has plates that you take the front plate off and the back plate off and you swap them for dust, dirt, or water okay. ingress. So I did, I did see something about it. it was like clear road, dirty road. I saw those mm -hmm. like plates, but I didn't see that like you unscrew it off. So yep. there's a solid plate on the back that you then transfer to the front. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, I think it looks like it's someone just trying to give somebody else a high five. Like, I think it's very awkward. Yeah. Looking, but they, as long as it works, who cares? Like, it's yeah. a, it's pretty ingenious in, in how they did it. And they also kind of went through like, you know, the world's most complicated snorkel design to make it fit around the mirrors, which the are mirrors. mounted to the like hood. hood. Fenders. Yeah. To the cowl, like where the windshield wipers go. Um, so that's Bronco Everglades. It's much less exciting than Bronco Raptor. Um, 2.3 liter turbo four, 300 horsepower, and it's $54,000 with a turbo four cylinder engine. Which remember, 50 is the new 35. This is almost, this is 54, probably 55 when you, this is, that's the base price. You know, 
every Bronco has five or ten thousand dollars of options on it. Oh my gosh, I can't find a big picture of the snorkel close up. Suck. <laughs> <laughs> this is all I do. <laughs> <laughs> now, we'll zoom in. Oh my gosh. It's on the, the audio list. I'm so sorry. It's on the website you write for. I know. I know. <laughs> but like that takes longer than just Google image search. And uh, uh, I actually wanted somebody to like diagram it out and Google okay. failed me. So. so for the audio listener, so take a Bronco, throw a snorkel on from the upper portion of the fender. It actually only has to come off the top portion of the passenger side fender. And then it actually, it's not just tubular like most of them are. It kind yeah. of like. Yeah, it like snakes up over the mirror. Kinks? Then, yeah. <laughs> That's a band, right? The Kinks? They are. A great band. Okay. All right. Um, it's brilliant. It's, uh, it looks weird, but it's brilliant. Yeah. I think it looks less, like less prominent than you're like, you wouldn't say snorkel right away. It's not like when you see a car that drives every day to the road and you're like, oh, why is that a snorkel? Like that mm-hmm. one doesn't look quite as like like the uh, the Tacoma, they did that one year desert air, desert air, desert rail, desert something intake. And it was literally just like, it was like a <laughs> duck mouth hanging out over the, over the roof. Click, click. Go too computer, go. Clicks, too many clicks. For the audio listeners, we're trying to see <sighs> pictures of the defender. There you so, go. So like if Land Rover can integrate this and make it look so smooth, I understand like the Broncos mirrors are actually mounted up here. Mm-hmm. Like, I understand why they had to go around it, but like, this does not appear to be a snorkel at all. Like, people walk past this and they're like, oh, neat. Like, they don't even think about it. But the Bronco one, they're going to look at it and be like, what the hell is that? So, that's, it's not really a point. It's just, yeah. yeah. To the audio so, listener, you can barely tell that the Defender has a snorkel because it just looks like it's the A pillar. Especially in dark colors. Yes. Which is great. Anyway, because most of the time it, it looks egregious and just basically draws attention. Okay, so that's the uh, less exciting portion of today's news. So now we have to talk about Nissan's Chicago Auto Show. Mainly because there's concepts. a Nissan enthusiast here. That is part of why. <laughs> <laughs> so Nissan debuted three con. They call them concepts. They're kind of like realistic interpretations of what you can do with your new Frontier. Uh, mm-hmm. They're akin to what Jeep does with the Moab Easter Jeep Safari concepts. So there's three, and I think we should go through them individually quickly because two of them are amazing and one of them is less, but the two that are amazing are amazing. <laughs> Am I wrong? No. Nope. I'm excited to hear which two you think out of the three are amazing. The two front vehicles in the picture that Chris is showing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number one is what they call Project 72X, which is... What color is that one? That's the gray one. Okay. Right. I did, yep. I did, oh, damn it. I was prepped. I Not didn't even one. read the no. notes. <laughs> so this is supposed to be like the Datsun 720 pickup. And it basically takes the spare tire steelies, paints, they painted them white. They put some retro graphics on, uh, painted portions of the bumper black, and then threw the sport bar on, which... Is an ex- it's a Nissan or a Nismo accessory, and it doesn't really work in like normal Frontier for me. But in this, it makes it it brings together the retro vibe. So this is concept one. This is so is this, and I know Nissan didn't really do this a lot back when they had the hard body, but it like reminds me of the Marty McFly Toyota pickup. Like it's got the sport bar in the back. Yeah. Like it, I think it looks great. The steelies are, you can definitely find spare tires like that. That exa- I'm sorry, yeah, spare that's, wheels. That, that's is, that exists. That's literally just the wheel from the spare tire that lives underneath every frontier and they painted it white. <laughs> Which a lot of Land Cruiser guys have been doing lately on their 80 series. They just go get a bunch of Toyota spares and throw them on. It's yeah, good. I, it's great. I owned a forerunner that had that. <laughs> yeah. It's great. So that was number one. Number two is what they call Project Hard Body. So it's got a three inch lift and adjustable upper control arms. It's got the sport bar with LEDs pointing over the cab the way that, you know, we'd see it in the nineties. And the best part is the wheels. It has the wheels from. Were those on the, on the hard body trucks or were those Pathfinder wheels? Both. 
They were okay. I they, believe so. I could be wrong. It's the best Nissan wheel that's ever existed. Sorry. <laughs> Somebody with a GTR has just uh, cried into their turbos, but yeah, I don't care. <laughs> they they can they can cry into all their fun electronics. <laughs> These this is the best Nissan wheel that's ever existed. I hate tri spoke wheels. This is an amazing wheel. Like mainly because to me, like for me, it's nostalgic because like I had an uncle who had like seven nissan pathfinders when i was growing up and they all had this wheel on them like it's such a good wheel it's such a good shape and we're now far enough away from the 80s and the 90s that where people are like yay it's back he just said 80s and the 90s do what <laughs> say that again you, from it makes me feel really old <laughs> it's all right i i played a trivia game the other night and they were like which artist has had a number one hit in four decades and it was a whole bunch of people from the past. And I chose the correct answer, which is Mariah Carey. Because you have the 90s, the 2000s, the 2010s, and we're into the 2020s now. Oh, so Mariah Carey has had a number one oh. hit in four decades. Yeah. I like, well, that hurts. <sighs> yeah, homie. You're not even that old, Ross. Like, no, but still. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh. I like the sports bar as much on this model. On you this. don't like it? I'm not on, no. Like, I agree that so the sports bar is very polarizing people either really love it or they don't love it at all mm -hmm. and i doesn't really love it on the standard frontier um i like you said on the last one that you showed i really like it it definitely draws a lot of that retro back this i don't love it as much oh, i'm still I agree. sharing still sharing yeah so. just talk about the other one real quick i don't have the other one oh, that's why i was it. going for it <laughs> I didn't. Um, I did no, but, all this prep, and I didn't really remember what it was called. And thank you. you know, the the thing is, with these two concepts, they are really leaning into the like Radwood group and right. saying like, "Hey, there's lineage here. These trucks are connected to the trucks that you grew up and you love. You can do with them what you did with them when you were younger." And there's there's just no slammed one you know like where's the two-door yeah. on the ground part part of me wonders if there's actually parts that are shared all the way back from like the 90s hard bodies <laughs> to now. i mean this I, frontier shares stuff with technically the 2005 frontier so 2005 frontier probably shares something with the prior one that was yeah. like with the 80 series i was i was like what what modern piece still transfers over the rear uh, disc brake on my 80 series was still in modern forerunners, which means it's probably the same as the disc brakes on the back of my truck. <laughs> probably. So, and then the last one that they showed was project adventure, which was just the most kitted out overlander that they could, you know, pull from the parts bin. Emmy brought Emmy sent this picture around to us earlier and made a comment about how the it's an like overlanding vehicle, but the map that's printed on it has like major roads. Major interstates. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> uh, it's an off-road vehicle with with paved tarmac on it. <laughs> the only thought I have is as a designer, they're like, this is going to be more like prominent when you're pulling up a map, but yeah. I that it's not <laughs> well and for like side steps aren't aren't these the no-nos aren't these those like are, rock catchers those are catchers for sure yeah that is like the worst thing you can put between yeah. the tires <laughs> and it yeah it really does have a little of everything on it they're like yeah is that a tent and uh and yes and yes it's a tent and a soft side cargo bag or is that just another tent it looks like another tent to be totally honest which yeah, sure. given if you have you know five people in a frontier you're gonna want to get away from each other in separate tents on top <laughs> you want the new That's remote controlled mobile tent that brings the tents like 10 feet or 15 feet away from each other on the campsite yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Rebecca just described my perfect camp out with the kids. So you guys are in that tent and I'll yep. be over here. Yep. yep. That's how my parents made us do it. We had to we had to pitch our own tent and they gave us like an absolute like limit to how close we could get to the to how close. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> close. 
<laughs> so are you like 30 feet away from your parents? Like <laughs> at least. Are you I mean that was like we got they also stash the food in your tent? <laughs> right. <laughs> They're like, here's the bear. I mean <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But I mean, this was in Texas where, you know, the, the critters are small, but they're, you know, rambunctious. So like raccoons and things, not like big bears or anything that could eat you. <laughs> I, I think only one, one of them is a tent because here's a, a shot with the, the backside tent open. Or is this a different truck? That's the wrong color. No, no that's, that's, that's yeah. it. Yep. Maybe the, um, the other thing was just a storage thing. I think no, so. It definitely looked like a soft shell rooftop tent it looks like the cabela's bag my dad had on top for every road trip when i was a kid like it was like a one of those like waterproof bags that you take when you go canoeing except they made it just big enough to hold luggage like it would zip and so what you see like a prius or a civic going down the highway with in like you're in like you know Pennsylvania and it has Georgia plates and they're doing 80 in the left lane and it's got wind under yeah yeah it's lifted up and yeah hopefully they did a little better than that with the uh the, the frontier off-road on-road concept yeah that's how I would outfit my truck to do such things but they <laughs> did would fit yeah like yeah it's, <laughs> they put parts that fit yeah it's it's not a, a fab job. Like they, it's a real yep. world example. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Of, so, on, of only interstates. <laughs> of only interstates. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Nissan. <laughs> Technically, Emmy Hall said it, not me. Yes, exactly. It's true. We it's can a, blame Emmy. No, it, it's, a, it's, great a, it's a great design. Cool. It's a cool one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. If you off road, you will automatically notice that it's probably interstates. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny so um, okay two real quick last pieces of news do uh, you want to pull up the picture of this abomination did you go in order there we're going in order okay so this uh, is the only picture i could find so everybody knows that the land rover defender once upon a time until very recently and until the current model was available in a soft top and the current model is not available in a soft top. So an outfitter has decided to make it a soft top. And it's really troublesome. Um, I would like to reopen the conversation about when that, I don't know if it was the same company or not, but turned FJ Cruisers into convertibles mm. and reopen the conversation about the um, Land Rover Evoque convertible. And then now we have this, which it's, it, I don't really like. So they turned a four seater into a two seater and they removed kind of all of the structural integrity and <laughs> like lobbed off the roof with, you know, no semblance no or no anything. It's all a render, but it, it, it looks like you're signing your life away if you drive this thing it's a liability <laughs> so to the audio listener they just literally came in and shaved off the top and cut off the back three-quarter glass and then kind of planted a soft top across the back of it like there's no there's no image of the top up i couldn't find one with the top up so think um mercedes g-wagon convertible which is Not already an awkward looking vehicle that looks drastically better than this this looks like somebody like an intern was given a design brief and they were told they have a half hour on photoshop bad photoshop yeah yeah, yeah. Right. just took an eraser and just basically just they're like look at the back tire the spare tire on the back is like literally ms painted like they went straight up and down with an eraser <laughs> it, it's also an all season when everything else is an all-terrain <laughs> yeah it's ko2s on, <laughs> on the tires of the ground so they are ko twos. Yep. It just looks like a little beach cruiser. Yeah. Which that that's what it would be perfect for. Right? Like take your surfboard to the beach. That's what that looks like. Where you you gonna, the, where are you gonna put the surfboard? It's a great question. In the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'll be back. Yeah. Do you remember the uh the Freelander? They had that that was it LR2, they called it the Freelander, yeah. the convertible. Oh no. There was a convertible Land Rover 
that I think shared some stuff with like the original Ford Escape. Yeah. That is uh, possibly better looking than whatever this is. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I know I'm not making this up. I've seen them in person. Well, you didn't make it up, but like, th- this is better. This is better. It's very 90s. Oh, hell yeah. It's very ridgeline. <laughs> that does. It does look like a ridgeline, like a short or Aztec. Is it a? It looks like an amigo. <laughs> oh, the amigo. An Isuzu amigo. <laughs> Everybody's friend, the amigo. Like, uh, I love and those the rodeo. commercials. Yeah, oh, poor Suzu. Amigo, like everybody loves amigo. It goes so good. <laughs> I don't know why I know the jingle. <laughs> yeah, that's concerning. So, okay, let's let's hit our last piece of news real quick, and then uh, let's move on to things that matter. I I couldn't. Like this was hard. I kind of found a skateboard picture. That's all they announced. So, oh, I've got some weird renders for you too. Then, oh, that's concerning. So the big announcement today was that Ram is doing an EV platform. They will have some kind of electrified pickup available in 2024, kind of concurrent with what we expect for you know, like kind of mass retail sales for the Ford Lightning and. Chevy's silk. Were they? It was a Silverado EV. Yeah, they called it. Can't, I, there's too many made up names now. All of them will get here before Cybertruck, so it's fine. They will. So yeah. That was the big announcement, and this rendering looks kind of like what you'd expect. It's it's. It just looks dark, like they didn't want to show you too much because they're not quite sure. Right. Because right. they don't know. Yeah, they're like, ah, don't put too much detail, just a little silhouette. Yep. It. Make sure the wheel looks kind of like it's in a place and then <laughs> put a fog over it. Great. It has just enough hint of the Silverado EV to make me think that this would be the Avalanche EV. Like it right? just <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, do you remember that Dodge Rampage concept from like 2005, maybe? Oh man. No. <laughs> I'm, really impressed. I'm really pulling stuff out of the back of my head tonight 2006 you're just trying to get him to google all the things right. <laughs> yes. i'm just i'm playing the land game on on the podcast tonight. so my, my favorite part is like now that i have searched this yes i do remember it because i've a hundred percent shared it on the show before <laughs> okay so something about the profile and just like the silhouette of the image you just shared is reminiscent of this yeah. Mm. Yeah. See, I think it looks the hood looks to me like it's the TRX hood that you have in the driveway right okay. now. Like but the back end of it. Yeah, the yeah, back end doesn't match a modern truck. Yeah. It, Interesting. This does have that slope kind of like the render does. So yeah, it could what be the rampage. That would be awesome if they called it the rampage. They resurrected a 15-year-old concept card. <laughs> a 15-year-old concept card with the name from a 30-year older. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, let's talk about the TRX real quick. So the TRX that I have parked outside is the same one that Chris drove. It is at Road America a few months back that I didn't take photos of. That you didn't take photos of, but I I will take plenty of photos. So it's enormous. It makes more noise than any vehicle should make, and I've driven ah. all of three miles. <laughs> so more impressions coming next week. And I've literally seen the gas gauge go from full down to like. A 16th down to like down to 16 down to, yeah Three miles <laughs> it's just Man, so when did you send me that photo it literally doesn't fit in my garage so for reference uh my wife has a cx5 it fits in the garage with about a half inch on both sides and a half inch between the like roof and where the garage door comes down the bed of the ram would barely fit into the garage that's how tall this thing is Wow. All right. There's it's, our little gifts. Offense. <laughs> it's offensive. I know I'm five foot nine, so I'm not like, you know, a big person <laughs> that is like, you know, just stepping. I have to climb up into the that's okay. Everybody knows what a tear looks like. Yeah, but they don't know how much bigger it is than your house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how much does it cost relative to my house is another question. <laughs> I, I don't know the answer to that. A lot. It's okay. a really high percentage. Yeah, it's a really high percentage. 
before we like jump fully into other stuff. Oh, I get, I put updates, didn't I? You put updates, yeah. I bought a leveling kit finally. Woo! It's actually on the way. So talked about it's it for fine. years, years. Um, special component. So I bought what I wanted. So it's only, it's more, uh, it's two and a half in the front, one in the rear. Shouldn't be that huge. Um, it should be just fine to just do most of what we want to do. I tried to find a, a metal skid plate for today from like GM and the parts, the parts department I talked to just sat there on the phone and was just like, man, I don't know. What? It's like, I, I gave him a number and he's like, it's not coming up for me. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm going to call somebody else. The Z7, I thought the Z71 had some metal Had skins. a metal skin plate. So he gave me a number and I started looking at the parts number he gave me. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that's on my truck already. But because my truck sits so low in the front, I had to go and like get on the ground in the garage and try to be like, yes, it's already on there. And then touch it and be like, yes, that is hard plastic. That's not metal. Um, so I'm still on the hunt. For a skid plate, I've called a, I've called and emailed a couple of aftermarket companies, and they're like, "Yeah, we have stuff for Silverados, not Suburbans." Thanks. So that doesn't help. I was like, "Is that they're they're similar but not quite perfect?" And so I, it might just be that I have to just have a buddy weld something and weld torque some stuff. And, yeah, um, I do know a guy who can do stuff like that, but um, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing I bought was so silly. They're LED yeah. backup lights. Um, when I when I put the Suburban in reverse, like it has the backup camera that comes on and I just like, I never feel like I can see things on the screen because um, it's dark around here. Um, and so I bought something that's, I think it, the, the stock light is a hundred lumens and these LED ones I bought are 720 lumens. So like, nice. I'm going to put the truck in reverse and it's going to be the face of the like, sun on people. Yeah. Like, daytime. It's not quite like the, the pure out and out LED light bar in the back is an FU light, but it's just going to be reverse lights, which on a GM truck is kind of an issue because modern GM trucks, when you lock the truck and walk away from it, the reverse lights stay on. And so and that's a problem I'd notice like when I didn't have a GM truck, and I'm like, are they backing out? What are they doing? Like they don't have their brakes on, they're backing out. And like then you see the person walk away from the vehicle. Right. And you're like, oh, those lights just stay on as like illumination. So like uh, I will be able to see as I walk to the store, but like people yeah. behind me are gonna be like, what is going on? <laughs> Retinal burn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have a line of cars just waiting to like drive past the car that you walked away from. Yeah. How about fine. the uh the lights that you bought for the Sequoia? Can yeah, you see what that what that is for lumens? I know lumens are everybody measures everything. Oh, I right didn't I didn't even look at those. Those were so cheap. I just bought them. <laughs> so I've ordered the same set of reverse lights for all three forerunners that I that I've had, and I sent them to Chris today on a whim. They're like fourteen dollars for yeah. a set of two, and they're sixteen hundred lumens. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, that's it's amazing. Literally, like if you're looking at it when the trucks are never, it, it's painful. You can't do it. So, but, but the, the best part of that was Ross sent me the link. I clicked the link and immediately Amazon said, these fit the Sequoia. I was like, well done, Amazon, go ahead and buy now. Thank you. $15 <laughs> later. Like, and then I ordered them afterwards for the Lexus. <laughs> yeah, at, at, uh, I'm not, I don't, I'm not gloating, but like at 15 bucks, like if they don't work, like 14, was, for, Thir well, 1375. Tax, taxes and shipping got them to 15 okay, for me. It was like 1537 or whatever. So. Yeah. Um, uh. <clears throat> but we're not the only people with no vehicles. Yes, let's talk. Things more exciting than our own. I'm downloading them out of my email right now. The pictures? Yeah, she emailed them to us. So where, where should we start? Where, do you, where are you going with the pictures? So we can... Well, the pictures are wherever. So You're just pointing up. I don't know who's... Rebecca's up for me. Sorry. Oh, Rebecca's <laughs> Sedona's over there. You're next to me. <laughs> Rebecca's above me. It's a big Brady Bunch tonight. Yes. Yeah, right. Uh, so what's new in your household? Your fleet? <laughs> Mine is a, a 1993 Delica Star Wagon, an L300 Turbo Diesel. It's awesome. four-wheel drive weird van. <laughs> it's so good. Amazing. The name I, of itself, like in star, like star wagon, star wagon, L three hundred star wagon, yeah, yeah. It it looks like a um, 
yeah, it looks like a little spaceship. When we had it, I brought it out to uh, Yucca Valley and was driving it around in the silt beds and all the crazy, and just, it's slow. And you were saying that <laughs> you have a vehicle that's loud. This sucker is loud. Does it have a muffler? Yeah, <laughs> but it's diesel and it's very loud. Diesel. Um, and actually, the um, I had to get some tack weld done on the heat shield because <laughs> it, that was also, ah. also rattling. <laughs> <laughs> I went the entire, I just drove it across uh, from uh, LA to Houston, Texas and oh geez. and um, camped along the way. And, and that there were certain, um, I could put a certain pressure on the, on the gas pedal to get the, <laughs> to get the rattle to stop. <laughs> <laughs> like That's even that, more amazing. That 100 <laughs> RPM gap, it goes away yeah. where like the vibrations just right. I'm like pulling into campsites or like driving through areas where I should be quiet or whatever. I'm just trying to modulate the amount of rattling. I didn't get it. I didn't get it tech welded until I got to Houston. So I went the entire way with a rattling. It was very um, funny. And the, the, the trip is like 1600 miles oh um, usually, but I took a very circuitous route and I didn't want to touch freeway. And so I drove 3,100 miles. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, you just avoided the Nissan Frontier map. Yes. <laughs> yes. Excellent callback. Like well done. Everything but, yeah. So my like route, I send the tracker information to a couple of people, um, namely my mother, since I'm traveling by myself, she's like, where are you? So I just sent the tracker info and, um, and it looks kind of like an EKG. Oh. <laughs> just, that would be... So like, funny to run a map I, that did that across the country. Like I, I literally used this. Nice. My, my way. Atlas. Yeah, old school. And I, uh, and I highlighted my routes and stuff. But, but like my, my stuff goes like. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> Was she just skips right over where I live? <laughs> <laughs> Could have just inverted the whole thing and stopped at you. You know. <laughs> I know, as I'm going, I'm texting people that I know live in different places, but I'm not sure. And I'm like, don't, I'm taking it as it comes, you know, and like, oh, I see something on the map that I like, oh, I'll go to the Billy the Kid Museum. Sure. Oh, and, uh, and I texted Sedona and was like, what, what city do you live in? <laughs> <laughs> I was um, from where you were. At. I was like, no, oh, I'm. I went through Prescott to say hi to the Max Trucks guys. <laughs> Prescott, which is Prescott. a good call. They Prescott. Were, they were seemingly remind you it's Prescott. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, <laughs> did you do the whole thing navigating by Atlas, by like paper map? Yeah, I did. But I, so I decide what I want to do, and then I force my GPS to, to follow the route I want it to, so that I am not having to stop and look at the map and stuff i can just keep going but mm -hmm. i forced the the route on my gps was this just, some kind of like self-induced training or or <laughs> well it's preparatory kind of ordeal mostly because the delica is very slow <laughs> so you're and not the highways to go 90. <laughs> i yeah. i i had a terrifying on the way back because i had to get here rather quickly on the way back i'm now back in california and i just did that trip in six days, but I did like one long, two long days. And the the day going into El Paso, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to get on the 10. And it was like 80 mile an hour um, speed limit. That is a goal. That is a top speed for the Delica. And people are going nine miles an hour. And I'm just 60 and gripping it. And, and on the downhills, I did get it to 80. Um, it was for a moment and it was downhill. <laughs> and it's so what year is the Delica? It's a 93. Right hand drive. Right hand drive. Yep. JDM diesel. Right -hand. To the, diesel. To the it's got turbo diesel. Oh, okay. So I don't I don't know what without the turbo it would be like. So <laughs> a really... tractor. It would be a tractor, yeah. it would be a tractor speed. <laughs> No, does it have 300. like spinning back seats or anything like anything yeah it does fold? 
the seat, um, the, the first row of passenger seats um, can flip so that they'll, the two rear seats will face each other. And okay. then they both will lay down. So I camped out quite a bit and, and slept in the van and on BLM lands or in developed campsites or whatever, and then did a couple of hotels. But I, I did, I wanted to go long, um, the long way because I just feel like I haven't seen enough of, of the U S and I, I didn't, I actually don't like driving the freeway. I think there's so much less to see and you get to know. Miss everything. Yeah. And there's, there's just much more to see. And also I can pay attention to the engine, how the vehicle's running and, and adjust how I'm driving as opposed to just like sheer terror because I've got an 18 wheeler, like running up. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of highlights? Days. It was 16 days. Um, Hit us with some highlights. Uh, Prescott, getting to Prescott with these crazy things like this. The switchbacks and, it, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Um, one of, when I got out of, uh, Sedona and I did a little zigzag or whatever I had picked on the map. This was just like bad move. Had physically map. had a map open and been like, I'm I was like, Oh, that, that's a lake. I'm going to, and it's on like public land. I'm going to camp by that lake. And so then I'm like, okay, this is how I'm going to get there. And I'm, I'm driving and I realize, oh shit, I didn't pay attention to the elevation. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going over, there are several Mount Baldies, but I was going over the peak of Mount Baldy in uh, Arizona and it was over 10,000 feet. Oh and gosh. Delica does not do well oh, in God. elevation. <laughs> And so I just kept going up and up and up. And I was like, oh, wait. And it was getting colder and colder. And of course, this is December and the days are shorter. And I realized I'm going to be camping uh, at the highest elevation at, and it's going to be about 20 degrees at night. And I don't know what this vehicle is like in freezing weather. And mm -hmm. I'm going to be by myself on with this isn't even a developed campsite. It was just like drive out a dirt road to a lake. Oh. okay i guess i'll have to revise as quickly as possible so i raced down the mountain as fast as possible P problem with that is that i had stopped in this grand delusion that i was going to be by this lake for sunset and stuff and stopped at a brewery um on the way like at pine top or something and we <laughs> bought a growler that stuff it in the yeti and then i go and i start oh, no. hearing this click, 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 click. And I'm like, what the hell? And I realized I jumped out. There was a bolt had jammed into the tire. And so I had a bolt in the tire that I'm driving and I'm at the top of a fucking mountain. And I realized I have to get down the mountain as fast as possible. Do I stop and plug it or do I just chance it? And I'm like, it's going to take me so long to plug it. I'm going to be stuck at the top of the mountain. I, I just got to chance it. So here I am in this unreliable vehicle and this <laughs> tire with a bolt in it and i'm racing as fast as i can down the mountain just to get down elevation and i ended up and there's nothing nothing once you get out of once you get out of that that lovely area where there's so much public land and stuff there is like nothing there was just all it's all private and there's like rv parks so i had to pull into an rv park instead of this beautiful lake i was going to be by not even a consolation prize just the a... rv park <laughs> oh bummer but it, it, i made it and the the bolt was still there and i'm like well it's i just barely at sunset um i didn't want to drive after dark because that vehicle has zero crumple zone like you yeah. are the windshield you are the crumple zone. you are the crumple zone. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. So I, I pull in and I'm like, all right, the bolt's still in there. The tire's still, um, I'm going to grab a small compressor. I didn't have one with me. So I ran over to Napa, grabbed a small compressor. One of the stupid ones that overheat before you even get your tire filled. Oh, they incinerate themselves. From the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was like, just in case. And then I woke up, of course, it was flat as hell. And so I plugged it and took like an hour of <laughs> doing the compressor and turning it off, letting it cool off. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. It took an That's hour to inflate a tire. Those things, yes. <laughs> those compressors are the way that they're rated is based on how long they will inflate a standard size tire before overheating and having to cool until you can then cycle them back on. Right. It was, 
yeah, it was a very long, yeah. cold process because it was still like 30 degrees in the yeah. morning when I woke up. So I can't imagine what it would have been at the top of that mountain because I descended several thousand feet. <laughs> Single digits. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but everywhere I went, people would just jump out of their vehicles or I'd just pull up to a stop sign and a guy would be standing there and he'd be, <gasps> Rad ride. <laughs> I mean, agree, but you know, I, I, I may have walked blocks back to take a picture of Adelica and Breckenridge. Yeah, like it's they're <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Two guys jumped out of their vehicle and like stood on the hood at a gas station as I'm pulling up to a stoplight, and they're like waving, and they're like, "That's so fucking cool, man! Oh my god!" I'm all, yeah, I can't break. And right in that moment, I was having to make a U-turn because I made the wrong turn. Nice. <laughs> Can you guys tack a heat shield? When that Can way. You... <laughs> That's amazing. Everywhere I went, everybody knew. It's so good. So and I just... brought my motorcycle on the back as like a like a dinghy with a sailboat, just in case something went wrong. I could get my motorcycle off and just oh. ride to safety somewhere. But then it ended up just being like an anchor in the back of the, in the back of the Delica. A weight going downhill, but yeah, uh, yeah. also a weight going uphill. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Now, now I'm curious about like the dynamics between when the motorcycle's there. To like, does it does it take more weight off the the steering wheels? Because like <laughs> you already don't have a lot of weight over the steering wheels. Yeah, exactly. I do. I yeah, it's a real smooth ride. You're right on the tire. You're on the engine. It's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it does have a little like it's pretty even even with the, the motorcycle in there but as soon as i took that thing off that thing was like woohoo i'm flying <laughs> how much does it weigh the motorcycle the delica oh the delica is like very 3, light pounds less really oh yeah. so you put ross there's not pounds. a lot of metal there you put it, you know it, 300 pounds or 275 pounds on the back and it's that's yeah. a huge percentage. it's like a 10, yeah more than 10 percent <laughs> seriously I need to get the video back open because Rebecca was outside of the vehicle and you could see the size relationship. <laughs> Rebecca's not big. <laughs> I'm little and it is little, but I have to climb into that thing. And uh, when I got to Houston, my grandmother was like, I want to ride in your new in your new van. And I was like, okay, great. You're never gonna be able to get in the front seat. <laughs> no, it's like a rock climbing move to get up into that passenger seat. That's how I feel with this T-Rex outside. Like, mm -hmm. hop, skip, and a jump. Dude, I'm six foot four, and that's how I feel getting into the TRX. Like, <laughs> oh, well, it is I not. not. <laughs> it is such an awkwardly sized vehicle. I, and ladies, I sent Ross a picture of a gentleman who rode with me in the TRX the, the time I, I drove it. And like, he and I had ample room, and he was too to three times three times four times wow wider than me like he was an expansive human like yes it and we had tons large, of room like i didn't really large. know he was over there like it's that big a truck like it's gonna be I'm great driving around by myself <laughs> <laughs> what was that sedona but you had to climb a mountain to drive it <laughs> like you had yeah, to pretty much it. i will say he got in that truck all by himself so much bigger than me, but he got in on his own. Like, what did I? There's Delisha. Yeah. Delisha. Wait, your Delica's named Felicia? Delisha. Delisha. Oh, Delisha. I did not hear that, but I thought the the guy who sold it to me is a couple who are, um, they were cyclists and they were upgrading to a mattress. Yep. And um, fancy. Yeah. I happened to be just, I sold my F-150 before the pandemic and I was just renting cars when I needed it. And then I was like, God, it's gotten so expensive to rent a vehicle. I should just buy a used one. So I, I just on a whim went on Craigslist and was like, ah, I'll just buy a stupid little used car. And this Delica pops up. And apparently he had just listed it and I sent him an email five minutes after and went and saw it and it was incredible. But destiny. Yeah. Could have like, named it destiny. Yeah. But I asked him, I go, well, what did you guys have a name for it? Because I believe strongly in vehicle telling you their names and he said well we we called her delicia um you don't have to call her that and i was like well but did she tell you her name is delicia and he mm -hmm. said yeah and i said well then it's delicia yeah, exactly. <laughs> i'm not gonna be the one to change it usually 
when a vehicle gives you trouble, they tell you that their name is fucking pile of shit. Fucker yeah. Yeah. I was cursing her a little today, which I try not to, because I feel like they know, and then they get back at you. And this has great potential to get back at me since <laughs> it, basically the first week I owned it, I drove it up to uh, Bishop for a wedding on the 395 and blew the head gasket. <laughs> I saw the destroyer head gaskets. Uh, uh, that's not ideal. No, it was awful. So another like five grand um, and talking to a guy in Philadelphia who has parts who can ship them to LA and all this is just nuts. So I, but I was cursing her today because she was just all the uphill getting up to Yucca. She had just zero power and kept shifting down when I just wanted her, you know, I can just go as slow as you need to. But right about 60 miles an hour, she likes to try and shift down and shift back up and then shift down and shift back up and <laughs> just make up your mind. And I'm trying to just the slightest little thing on the throttle and it goes crazy. So yeah, she's the destroyer of head gaskets. So I, I was yelling at her today. <laughs> yeah, I replaced the cylinder head and everything because just like do it, do it all. And we did the rear engine seal and the Cry now or cry later. And gasket, everything. Yeah. Yep. Is there like while you're in there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's it's a cab over engine. And so it's such a pain in the butt to get everything out. Then you just, once it's out, what else you see in there? Let's fix it. And mm -hmm. then, yeah. Right. Or just refine the weak point next time. Yeah. But I so. want I, I want Sedona's husband to design uh, some, a really cool, I love the paint job of mine right now. But I want like a really cool, even more retro paint design. Doug really wants to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want a mural. I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen his, well, it's mostly his skills. He's like, I don't know if I could paint a mural because he's never done it. But I know Doug and I know that he could totally do that. He'd be like, I feel like Rebecca. <laughs> Eagle. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I, yeah. The bug is so good. Like so good right so last time you're on the show we talked about the bug how is the bug i'm gonna I'm not i'm honestly not a ton has changed but since it's cooled down in arizona we've been able to take it out a little bit um we're still on the hunt for seats because i have two kiddos and we'd like to take it with all of us so like currently when we take it out we either have to be without the kids um which is not terrible it's always fun to do that <laughs> Or in two vehicles, which then it's like one of us is enjoying the bug and the other one's driving a different vehicle. And, um, but not a whole lot has changed. We have not added anything. Like it hasn't been, we did the holiday thing, you know, we haven't put a lot into focusing on building the cars, <laughs> mm. trying to get through the season. <laughs> I can't believe it's February, quite frankly. <laughs> right. Yeah. And how's the weather out there? <laughs> Um, like in Arizona, it's beautiful. Today was like 75 now. So, but we're trying a couple more trips before it gets hot again. Um, cause it's doable in the heat, but being air cold, it's not always, we can't go as far. So it's been fun. And really we'd like to get a trailer to trailer it to some places to be able to do other things like meet up with Emmy in Yucca Valley and, or even try really, really hard. Like Emmy wants to take, um, her her yeah out to Glamis and like do the sand highway oh, God. With, right <laughs> we're like we're like this is we will do nothing but the sand highway but that sounds really fun to it <laughs> <laughs> that has that that would be some of the best pictures ever it would if, be a lot of fun. yeah that'd be great does yeah. the bug have a name Hilda Hilda so it'd be Hilda. Buddy and Hilda Buddy and Hilda yep <laughs> Buddy and Hilda traverse the sand highway that's like a key you could write a kid's book holy crap we can write a kid's book. We could write a kid's book. I will copy edit that. Do we know anybody that writes? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now we're all in a line, so I just pointed up at everybody. <laughs> Literally everybody. I know. Yeah. I might get paid to write words. It's fine. It's oh, on occasion. Man. <laughs> Not on occasion anymore. Now it's every day. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I get paid yeah. to do it. <laughs> my, my title was, uh, it was content marketer. Now it's content strategist. But I literally just get introduced as the writer. And yeah, so like, cool. I've, yeah. I've had an email sent to me be like, hey, can you proofread my email? No. Oh, no. What would the premise of- I'm not, a, I'm not an editor, I'm yeah. a writer. I mean, I can. What, what would like the plot of Buddy and Hill? Like there has to be some kind of like trajectory. What would the trajectory of that story be? 
<sighs> we can revisit this. No pressure we'll definitely, to yeah. answer it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have an outline tomorrow. It'll be fun. Probably. <laughs> Probably. So let's talk some uh, some navigational type shenanigans. They might get lost, Ross. You've already done the plot. They're going to get lost. Like, Is that a navigation joke? I'm gonna... oh, we get lost. <laughs> Buddy and Hilda are going to get lost. It'll be fine. Down. There you go. I told you. It's done. It'll happen it's done. tomorrow. <laughs> it's actually so good. Add in the puppy and it's a bestseller. Right. You didn't need... Reese over my shoulder just barked in his dream. So we're good. Like we'll get his dream. <laughs> He's asleep. I turned around to see if he was growling at something. He's asleep. Running in his sleep. Yeah. So um, navigation. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> it only took us an hour to get to navigation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the, only, this is the most important part of what I wanted to talk about. Because I still, I still think it's black magic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Voodoo magic. So I you think, shall not spell that for you. <laughs> right? Let's go. I know like Rebecca had background with like sailing charts and Sedona took like an REI class with orienteering kind of like both. That's like the super fast synopsis of background, right? Yeah. Can you walk us through the morning of the rally? Like, cause you guys are just given points, right? Yeah. Or distance and heading. What? <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Also what? <laughs> Not dispelling the black magic at all. <laughs> yeah, they'll give us a uh, latitude and longitude um, or they'll give us a distance and a heading. Um, and so sometimes you have to, in order to, obviously if for a distance and a heading, you need to have a known point that you're coming from. So you'll have to plot that and then distance and heading. And, and they'll try and trick you by, you know, doing 219 degrees from CP4 versus 219 degrees to CP4, and you'll in inevitably end up on the wrong part of the map because you've screwed it up because it's five in the morning and you haven't had your coffee yet. And... CP being checkpoint? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Checkpoint. Yeah. yeah just yeah. make sure. <laughs> you know, I, I want so much more lingo. It's so good. <laughs> Every morning we, we, I don't, Sedona, do you guys divide up your duties and stuff in the morning as well? I solely do the plotting of the checkpoints and Lynn kindly takes care of me. <laughs> she brings the breakfast and she's checking the car and anything that comes up she around the car and everything while you get started on navigation. Same so, thing. Yeah. 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 So let, let's back up for audio listeners who, who don't necessarily have the background here. So we're, we're talking rebel rally right. and this is the, the premise of the rally is that, you know, yeah, it is this navigation rally. So it is not about speed. It is about precision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, navigation is the most important part of it as much as we'd like, you know, our drivers told you, right, that, you know, you need to talk to them because that's exactly. what. Exactly. So our mornings consist of you, you wake up and you get anywhere between like 20, I don't know, what was the highest amount, like 20, 25 points. Yeah, sometimes more in the, and you have to make choices and strategic decisions about which ones you want to go to mm -hmm. and you, get, you can't get them all. Um, and it's, it's meant that way as well. They give you regular checkpoints and then X checkpoints. They have different values. Um, there are certain ones that are um, mandatory and then others are, you can choose to go get them. They have different difficulty ratings. And so, yeah, they give us a whole list and then we have to get out the corresponding maps for the areas that we're in because the rally moves down um, uh, Nevada and back in, down into California. And, uh, and we start with our plotter, our ruler, uh, plotting out the checkpoint, all the checkpoints. And then there's the road book, uh, which happens more than we'd like, <laughs> <laughs> which is, um navigation by tulips and so essentially I, I don't know about you um Sedona but when I get a road book um I've taught Emmy how to do the math because there's prescribed speeds and so you've got to basically put down on on each uh direction when it's like turn left at 2.1 kilometers it's never that long but sometimes it is 2.1 kilometers you're going to go left at the three rocks and so picture of three little rocks and a left arrow. And so it looks like, and this is kind of what, this is what they do in Dakar um, and other rallies, they do road books like this. Mm -hmm. And so they'll 
the picture of it and then all the instructions for it. But you have to figure out the time because we're doing time speed distance. So if you're not on time, you're not going to get the points. Yeah. So at any of these waypoints where you've got a left turn, a right turn, a go straight, a whatever, um, there could be a, a time check and you have to hit each mark within, usually it's three to five seconds um, based on what? the prescribed and, Yeah, and the prescribed speed changes from one part to another and it's, you know, 30 kilometers an hour or 50 or, or 20, 10, I don't know. And uh, they're usually four or five checkpoints, waypoints within that you get um, a point or two or whatever, or five points, I guess. And then it's decreasing depending on how many seconds you are off of your mark. And then uh, I usually look at those once I've taught, I've taught Emmy to do the math. So she sits here with the calculator. I plot our checkpoints with the lat long and, and stuff. And then I take the road book and I try to look and follow where on the map we're going uh, based on the distances. And I'm measuring with my little tools and looking like a total nerd. And foggy at 5 30 in the morning this is as nerdy as it gets dude it doesn't sound nerdy it sounds like <laughs> witchcraft like just... sure. so how do you decide when when they give you when you show up to the starting line in the morning or, or check-in or whatever it is when they give you your 20 or 25 checkpoints to which you can go to score points over the course of the day how do you have any concept of which you should do which you shouldn't do is it just instinctual or do you have some kind of like tactical i love tactical. that they both frowned yeah because I mean, it, it, through it darts like it. what yeah. it definitely just depends on your strategy so like i would say the first year i was like i'm gonna plot them all i'm gonna try for them all but the competition has changed and evolved and um now you have to kind of get picky and choosy and it really depends on your strengths and weaknesses like rebecca said they're 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 a little bit different, like different difficulties, kind of like a ski run. So it's like a black diamond is the hardest. It's not marked. Um, it's like a bullseye. There's nothing there. So if you're very good at those, um, Rebecca is very good at those. So she might look at that, like that is worth the points and the time to do that. Um, but it will take us out of the way for this blue over here. And so, oh, that's yeah. interesting. Okay. Um, and then people that are like, well, at least a blue, which is marked, um, it could be a small pole or a flag. Um, I could, I could see that I can feel confident that I got points and walk away from that. So it just kind of depends on your skill level and what your overall goal is. Um, it's because you could go to the black and be like, oh, I'm going to do really great. And then totally bomb it and not get points or, uh, actually get penalized because you have too far away from it. So you really have to gauge what that's going to look like. Um, I know that Rebecca and I both try to get as many of those checkpoints on the map before we leave the start line. It's not always possible, but you really want to see as big of that picture because it helps plan the whole day if you can kind of see the route. Yeah, because I, I then take all the closing times because the, the rally assigns closing times to move you along the, the route. And if you don't have a chance, which... If you're early off the line, you're not going to get all your checkpoints plotted usually um, yeah. mm -hmm. as many as possible. And then you'll have to plot on the, on the way, which is difficult, but, um, but you want to know where your whole route is so that you can see the terrain. So you can make those decisions. You know what the vehicle is capable of, what your driver is comfortable with, um, you know, seeing how far outliers are. Is it worth the time to go get them? Um, you know, how far down are you going to go? Is there a transit in between? and calculating the time it's gonna take between all the checkpoints, knowing that I'm gonna to have to get out and, and do some triangulation to get this, or we're, this is gonna take us long through this crazy bit. And we know that's gonna be slow going because we don't have a whole lot of clearance mm -hmm. or stuff like that. So there's, I assign closing times from, for our team that, that are aggressive for the closing time of the flag or whatever, but, but that only helps us keep going and, and make decisions. And the reason I do that is because of the first year we timed out on a checkpoint on the last day and we were in the running for first or second place and we timed out um, and ended our day halfway through and oh. dropped, dropped to 11th. Oh. I was like, after that, I'm never, never missing a, a 
a closing time again. And so it's been this thing where you learn constantly. Well, you make mistakes constantly and you hopefully learn from them and you hopefully don't make the same ones again, but you're going to keep making mistakes. They're just hopefully new ones. <laughs> right. <laughs> You've learned from them. So yeah. is it common or like a guarantee to have to adjust on the fly and, and maybe ditch a checkpoint or? Constant. Constant. You're- if you're not recalibrating, you're, you're going to find yourself in trouble. And yeah, you're like, oh, okay, I just need five more minutes here. But you know, that's going to mean something later. But you're like, I really, mm. I can nail this. I know it. Or, or you're just like, ah, we got to ditch it and go. We can't even go for that. We're so far behind because we uh, got stuck, you know, or we had a flat or. Yeah. And always we, account for all of the things you want it to be. If it yeah. all goes Absolutely great, but it that's not how it works. <laughs> that's just never, no. <laughs> well, especially off-road. Yeah. Which is why when I when I assign the aggressive check or the uh, closing times, you can make those decisions earlier in the day. If something's happening, you're not like caught up later going, oh, we spent too much time on that because you know I'm gonna we we have 30 minutes and we're supposed to be four checkpoints ahead of where we are right mm-hmm. now. So we've got to make some quick decisions and just skip and go so that you're not jeopardizing getting base camp at the end of the day, which is some big points. If you miss base camp at the end of the day, it's one of your bigger checkpoint uh, values usually. So you don't want to screw yourself. Like she said, the easiest ones, the green ones, those are most worth the most points. But if you miss them, then that's a big deal because they are worth most points. Um, Easiest ones are worth the most points? Yeah. Interesting. But are there the most of them? no so you you huh. could not win the rebel if you did not go for black checkpoints or yeah. if, you know you just couldn't like you couldn't get enough points but you can compete and thoroughly enjoy like especially like your first year if you go for greens and blues and you'll still do really well and it will just keep you on course and but they want you to get those greens because they are so important to keep you on the route mm-hmm. And they want you to get back to base camp safely, right? So they're going to make that. It's incentivized. Yeah. Right. Exactly. right. And the road books are, as much as they torture us, are they're mostly used to get us along the course in a timely manner as well. So that it's like everyone's there. They know when everyone's going to be starting that part of the course. Or it's a regulated part of BLM where we they don't want anybody speeding. And so they put the road books in there that have a prescribed speed. So they make sure no one no one's going to screw up because we're trying to get the, the points. We're trying to do it as prescribed. If they didn't do that, then we would be um, maybe violating the, the permits. So, yeah. And it keeps engaging like you have to keep your head in the game like because sometimes it can be two three hours long um and if you're down the road and you're just like like you totally (laughs) like rebecca said when she looks at the whole route because when we get at the other end of that road book we have to get back into the maps and be ready to do checkpoints almost right out the gate so you know they it's like she said they're a little bit of torture um but also very key point of what we do I think the people who do really well at them love them. And I, I think they're torture because it's, it is, it's so, it's so stressful <laughs> because you're, you're trying to, this is stressful this is, yeah, from afar. This is very stressful. <laughs> and, and you're in a car, you're in a vehicle and I'm, t- you're only going 30 kilometers an hour. That's nothing, <laughs> but, but inside the vehicle, it's as if you're going 98 <laughs> Right. You're on fire and you're like, oh, we're two seconds too fast, we're two seconds too slow. And, and he's like, adjust, adjust. Oh, there's going to be some curves up here. You're going to need to speed up now so that, because you're going to have to make up time later. And it's just co- constant, constant right. chatter. And uh, over the years, it's gotten less frantic. But man, that first year, I thought I, I thought we were going to have a heart attack. Every time we had a road book, uh, it, was, it was just like chaos inside. And we, we, if you screw up on something, it, it, the recalculating that has to happen on the run is nearly impossible. And there were, I did some kind of, and if you press the wrong button and you reset your timer, which I did the first year, I <laughs> like we were supposed to pause for two minutes and I pressed the thing and I was like, oh, it was just like, oh, was that, what was the time? Was. What was the time? <laughs> no, and oh, shit. And so now I have two timers in a, in a third, like backup. Third? Oh, 
as you <laughs> but there was a point where we were i thought we were two literally two minutes ahead of our of our time because we it was a like a three hour long road book it was crazy and i thought we were two minutes ahead and we i was like oh my god we're gonna hit this we're we gotta slow down we gotta slow down and emmy and i slow down slow down slow down and, slow. and i'm like literally you you press a break or something because we're not, <laughs> not even pressing the gas we're just creeping and creeping and then finally it's like just on a rolling it's just rolling and we're just and we're <laughs> we're laughing and we're so embarrassed she's like creeped down like this i'm ducking <laughs> down because, as if they can't see us driving by <laughs> It turns out that was a bad calculation and we were actually on time. So that <laughs> be two minutes late. That's amazing. <laughs> That's great. But not only were you embarrassed. I mean, going, what the hell are they doing? And we're just rolling towards them. So it was like, a, it was like at an endpoint. So everyone's going to watch you pass this endpoint and you guys are just slowly going. So really, mm -hmm. the, the time controls, they have like a little sign. You can't always see them because sometimes they're on a corner or like you're, it's around a turn. In general, you can kind of be like, okay, this is probably where it's going to be at. You can see the sign and there's per this person manning it that's going to get your right. time. You oh, cross that. Yeah. My dad always tells stories of like time speed distance rallies that he did in the late mm -hmm. 80s where they would, it would be like two hours between points and they would just go as fast as they could for like an hour and a half and then just stop and wait like around the corner because it was just right. one dude with like a, a card machine you know yep. so so they, okay. they they've made this all of our road books and then they've made rules where you cannot creep like what we did would be not allowed um after the first year they they made rules probably because of us but but <laughs> 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 that you can't creep because people would exceed the speed and slow down right before and you can't do that anymore yeah so don't you say you can't stop too yeah, you cannot physically stop on the no. my favorite when people are like but what if i have to pee and they're like pee before like <laughs> no. also, yes i mean like or and even and they say or find a safely like safe spot it makes a difference like right but mm -hmm. you can't stop in front of those time controls you can't you can't <laughs> pull into them that way i mean you if you're working time control station like you know you know oh. like you Oh, yeah, you could totally tell the difference between like someone that's, oh, okay, they had to slow down a little bit or, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you count backwards, like to the time as you're seeing the control, you're like, we're supposed to be at that control in 10 seconds, not and then, uh, eight, yep. seven. And she's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, that's the conversation. I'm always intrigued to hear how other teams communicate for that because Lynn is like, you have to yell at me. Like yell thing at me, like in <laughs> like 17 being like, what time, what time, what's the time, what's the distance, what's the distance, what's the time. And finally we've gotten to a little bit of a rhythm where she's like, you worry about distance and I'll worry about, cause if she's looking at the speedometer, the stopwatch and my, like my distance, she's going to be like, yeah, like losing track of it. Right. So we've kind of broken that up, but it's a lot of being like, okay, that's the time control. 10 and counting down and it's a, lot of it's, a, it's a constant like I'm constantly calling out okay now point two we're gonna have a this and point three we're gonna have this and you're gonna go right here okay and you're gonna need to speed up okay we're we? and I didn't start the timer on the one that was going through the um, Titus Canyon yes we went through Titus Canyon and <laughs> and <laughs> we're we take off and I did not start the timer Oops. And I had to do full recalculations for the entire, entire road book, recalculating as we were going. So I'm like jamming, which everything is Velcroed on my, in, in my on the dash in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I'm writing and writing and writing, and I'm trying to call out uh, instructions to her. And we put our instructions on the like middle of the, of the dash basically so that she can always peek as well. And she's paying attention to her speed and she's peeking and seeing what's next and, and take basically making sure there's not a speed change that I've missed or something. And so we're co constantly chatting, 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 chatting. But on top of that, I was having, she couldn't look over anymore because I was literally like, <laughs> <I'm> still writing. 
mad. And we made all the points on that. On that's, that, I, I have no idea how it happened, but it was, it was mad. Is it mad. never not like, I feel like it, we had a few that have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling the very first one this year, there was a new team and they were sitting at the table and you could tell that they were like, Oh, this was hard. Like it was a hard day and you know, it's not super easy. And like, they had their first TSD and they're like, how do you, and I was like, look, the very first few, if you can just maintain speed and check your distance, make sure you're going the right way. Like you're probably going to do fairly well on it. Mm-hmm. It's way trying to narrow it down and get within like, because at three seconds is not a lot of time for your bumper to cross oh. the point. Oh. It's, so it's uh, TSDs are um, definitely stressful. They're always stressful. I find that way more stressful than trying to like find a black checkpoint. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's crazy making. Cause I've, it's, it's the, it's a constant with the black checkpoint or it's like, every, just, shh, I'm just going to concentrate over here and be in a good room. Right. I, can't, them like, can't imagine. <laughs> can't imagine. What, what are your respective most difficult checkpoint? Oh, that's so. Or, or uh, yeah, directions. Or, Is it too big? Is that too big a question? That, that um, might be a. Under our belts. <laughs> I think every, I think the dunes are always the hardest. It's very difficult to measure accurate distance. It's difficult to maintain an exact heading because the driver has to be able to, you're driving over things like this. You've got to surf the dunes or, or drive what you can. And that requires you to go off heading. And it, re, it also adds distance. Uh, From elevation to- change. There's, there's, it's very difficult to be super duper accurate, but you can, it's just, that's the most, the most difficult. And in the, middle of the, day, when the yes. And when the features are not there that in the middle of the day, you, you don't see shadows, you don't see anything. So trying to find your runway of things to lead you to a checkpoint, they, d- once you start getting near them, you're like, where the hell is that? bump i was looking at i don't know damn it so yeah so don what about you um I, well, I would agree point in the in glamis and the dunes is definitely harder because you're like she said the distance is really where you play throughout the rest of the rally like you are like okay we're going to go this far for like you know you kind of get that that's in there should be a left turn that we're taking and you can see that on the map that's not how glamis works. Right. Um, I really tricky to get into canyons too, so mm-hmm. you can't can't see any other mountains or hills or any other features. Um, it has a very similar effect for me, where I'm like, oh, we're we've wound around this canyon, and now we're like in between two rocks. I can't see anything <laughs> else. Like you just go off of distance at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't this know sucks. if I can the the hardest one though. No, by any means. Yeah. The hardest one was that checkpoint 11 year one that dropped us out of the rally. Yeah. For that. <laughs> That's a fair assessment. It was, we were going after a checkpoint that was from the day before that was on there that I hadn't marked off. And the real checkpoint was wrapped around the map on the other side. Oh, so no. we for oh. a checkpoint that didn't exist. Oh. Awful. <laughs> that oh. Feel- <laughs> Not bitter at all about it. Yeah. <laughs> Not holding on to that at all. The earth Here, was, I'm still holding on to that person. One of the yeah. few and only instances in which the earth was flat. <laughs> <laughs> other side of the earth. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you always caught, you were calling it like black magic and people are always like, well, I, I can use a GPS. I can like see coordinates. I get that concept, right? Um, I always find it really interesting when people watch us plot because we're literally using rulers and mm-hmm. using on a map and like people don't understand that they're like i get how to kind of look at a map um and take a trail or whatever um but it's very different to find an exact point on a topographical map yeah so i mean you know the trope of all tropes is like the the guy that looks at a map and goes i know where i'm going you know like everybody's heard that joke and in the off-road world that's particularly um 
It's definitely a parent. Yeah, not, it's definitely. A, it's, 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 it's more prevalent, I believe, is what it's, you're looking for. It's, it's a little prevalent. Um, do you have any like pet peeves from your own navigational experiences in Rebel or not in Rebel that you know that lend to the greater side of ex exploration? <laughs> <laughs> companies that put interstates when it's a vehicle for back road <laughs> <laughs> or vice versa companies that are are trying to have something that comes to mind i know what comes to mind for me go ahead rebecca what? mine has definitely influenced how i do everything else too um is i my pet peeve is when i lose tools when I lose my tools when I lose my loop when I lose my glasses or pencil or what that's why everything's velcro you mean by loop clarification for a, a magnification uh, loop as oh. it yeah little magnifying glasses that I use to look at the map and see more detail and um and I've got just extras now after having lost some key items in previous ones I have a certain place that I, I want things to be set up in my office and I'm always, there's Velcro on the dash and there's Velcro on every tool I have so that I'm always just like, slap it up there, yep. slap it up there, it'll stay. Um, because putting things in pockets or putting things, you know, whatever, it's it's never gonna work. And I, I get so frustrated. And when you're already stressed about needing to, to be precise, when you can't find something or you're the speed at which you have to move in this rally, it's it's not about driving fast, but it is about navigating as fast as you possibly can. And you're slowing yourself down by being like, where's my pencil? Where's my ruler? You know, it's really irritating and I, it drives me crazy. That's irritating and like aggravating and frustrating and infuriating in normal day life when you're yes. looking for something and you don't know where, whether it's on your desk or like, you know, in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So when- It's heightened in that environment so yep. now it's that is the way i've taken care of myself in in the rally is has definitely influenced the way i take care of myself the rest of it. like there's certain places i put my keys i don't put my keys anywhere but there I put my purse in a certain place I've, like there are things where where i don't have you just take away the the extra brain activity that you mess mm -hmm. because yeah. you need that for everything else so eliminate the fluff yeah and when we're I pack our I pack our vehicles because I want to know exactly where everything is and things that are most valuable and used more frequently are more accessible. The less you're going to use something, it's more buried in there, but you still need to be able to get to it without unloading the whole damn car. Yep. Kind of thing. So it's Absolutely. that mind. If that gets wrecked, it it has a cascading effect on everything else. So that's a key when I when I'm not organized or I'm not lose when I'm losing stuff. That's a big thing that translates from the off-road world to daily life. And, and in many ways, I mean, you know, if you're like a day tripper and you have somebody like blow a U-joint and you know you have U-joint, but you don't wear your tool and you lose an hour and a half trying to do this, you know, fix a U-joint, whereas it could take 20 minutes, like that's an hour that you've lost. And in the same vein, just knowing where things are and being able to execute efficiently and effectively is like the off-roaders mantra, you know? Should be. It, it should, <laughs> it should be. Usually it's just <laughs> fucking floor it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Uh, my biggest pet peeve is when um, my driver, driver, and it could be aside from Lynn too, is driving faster and not physically faster, not like going like 90 or something, but faster than I can navigate. So if I've left a checkpoint or I've left a place and I haven't gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, you can go this far, but she's already going or in the same real world instance when my husband's like, let's go eat. And like, we just hop in the car and he's like, oh, and I'm trying to like find a restaurant to eat at <laughs> as we go past it because we're going on the highway. Like those moments, those yeah. are really, I'm like, I can't, I just need two minutes and I can find a restaurant and get us there. Or I just need 30 seconds and I will measure to the next checkpoint. And I can measure on the fly when I know that's what we're doing, but it's those moments of like, it's okay to take a moment because <laughs> it's better to take 15 seconds to know exactly where you're going than have to take 10 minutes to backtrack yeah. or, or longer even if you messed it up. But that's where I'm like, I just, it's okay. That patience saves time. 
you've seen the videos of guys like trying to read off pace notes and rally racing where the driver is two turns ahead and they're just flipping pages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's and like that. It's like, it's great. Like, but, you know, <laughs> Was there was one fairly recently where like the co-driver just starts cussing at the driver? He's like, "Simmy, you're not <laughs> listening to me. Like, you just listen to me." Like, always, always. Cuss at me. in the off-road world when they're like, "I know where we're going, but do you really know where you're going?" <laughs> like, I don't. Probably not. <laughs> Give yourself a second, know where you are, and then you can take off. As opposed to yeah, all the time you'll waste being like, "Wait, where?" and not looking behind you. I've taken off on the um, jet skis in Colombia on a jet ski. And we're just like, awesome. We're just take off. And we're in the middle of all these like mini lakes. And I'm like, oh shit. I never looked where we came where we from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I just happened to remember that's the radio tower on the road. And I'm like, that was pretty close. So, okay. We'll look for the radio tower. We'll be able to at least like maybe get in the same vicinity, but what an idiot move such an idiot move we could have been lost for days yeah, i have a similar story doing that 15 15 years old on a lake and i remembered that the water tower is one point over from the cove we left from like finding that water tower is all otherwise i i didn't pay attention like it was just, that thing went fast yeah, yeah. just take off yeah. so in light of all of this i'll throw mine out there and it's uh in the off-road world it's people not being humble <laughs> uh, mm. And on that, we'll check the box and <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm okay taking the easy way around. Like no. Uh-huh. Yep. Nothing no. to prove. <laughs> Wait, but not being humble like people pretending they know where they are and where they're going. People pretending right. that they and both their own and their vehicular ability is mm-hmm. capable of doing something it's not. Yeah. Like when you need a winch, stop spinning the tires. Like just get the winch. Like, stop trying to waste the time of everyone. Just get it unstuck. You're not getting out. Yeah. I think competition, like the Rebel, knowing that it's an endurance thing, that we have to do it for, you know, eight days. You have to treat that vehicle well enough to- sympathy. Right. You we just, you have to treat it really well. And so I think that definitely helps. And it helps be like, we don't need to do it. And if we do need to do it, let's do it right. Mm-hmm. I do think that there's a certain level of <laughs> we don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> you, think, uh. you think you know, and then that that rally will make sure that there are moments when it slaps you down, and you're like, no, I actually. No. It's important yeah. though. Keeps you humble. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah, but I do. I, I experience on the uh, well anywhere. We as women experience quite a bit of the um i i sh- i shoot commercials and there have been a lot of the stuff we do would be off road and and someone will get a vehicle stuck and i'll be like oh we just need to blah 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 and they'll be like no no, no 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 we're gonna back up we're gonna back up and i'm like you're gonna back up you're gonna be off camber and you need to, if you just go forward we'll just get some traction no, no, no. and i get talked over and then finally i'm just i have to just not let let them do it and it wastes the time and yeah it's like it's so silly but it's because i mostly work with a bunch of dudes that are adventure dudes and they you know like oh no i got this i got this you know and i'm like actually it's quite simple it's just really simple and they're like, <laughs> sadly that has it's still there yeah, yeah it's not it's going it. anywhere i'm yeah, sorry yeah, yeah. like i wanted to it's not like, yeah. shut up just listen to people it doesn't matter who they are they they have valid points simplest yeah. way is usually the best yeah but i was I, the reason why i asked to, to clarify what you meant by humble is because um sedona and i will will speak of ourselves as being good at what we do so yeah. yep. make sure we didn't offend you. if you can back it up then you know it's not a matter of being humble it's a matter of actually being qualified to substantiate your own <laughs> claims yeah we're good we're good but we still suck <laughs> <laughs> don't <That's>... we all <laughs> you reminded that we're not that good <laughs> <laughs> i've still gotten emmy lost many times <laughs> and myself. 
great. I, I put myself on top of a damn mountain when I shouldn't have been anywhere near it and like just didn't even look at the elevation. Are you kidding? That was amateur move, man. Like you read maps <laughs> all the time. Like it's right there. It was right by the campsite, like right by the you lake. Just, <laughs> just see the little lines together and no. It's just selective. I don't, is that road atlas is it does it have topo lines like very prominent ones no and oh, okay. I, I wish it did but it didn't have it doesn't have topos but it does have little hashes you know little hash marks with the numbers next to them and there's a number with a hash mark right next to where i chose my there was one with a 10 and the road you know <laughs> yes with ten thousand eight hundred and something feet and the road started at eight yeah yes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it literally went like the, it, the they had to move the number because the road was going right by the peak. It's like, oh, yeah, it was such a ding dong. It was just a really Oops. good. <laughs> the mistake you learn from, it's fine. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy with those. I think you learn more from mistakes, ugh, unfortunately, um, yeah. than you do from your uh -huh. successes. Like, oh, that was great, and I'm gonna try to do it again. As not as effective as oh that was really freaking stupid i'm gonna never do that again <laughs> the i don't know anything about that <laughs> nothing does. nothing about mud he does. comes to mind narrator yeah. he does yes uh, <laughs> he was speaking sarcastically <laughs> it's, it's a mantra i have with the kids all the time i was like it's okay to make a mistake just don't repeat it like if it's a different mistake that's fine that's not repeating like we're still learning like he is how you deal with the mistake. You correct it, or you do better next time, or you <laughs> learn something. Or still throw your quad into a again. mud pit. Yep. <laughs> Break your golf club on your knee. Exactly. <laughs> I've, I've never actually done that. I don't play a lot of golf. golf. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, sweet. We, we've gone for a while. Yes, we've done a show. <laughs> Usual. I, I appreciate yeah, you ladies seriously. both joining us. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. Do you, do you guys have anything you want to plug? I know. I was like, I don't have anything going on right now. Sorry. <laughs> isn't that, but isn't that nice though? Like just life. It's just, yeah, just life. life. Everybody enjoy life. That's a really good plug. <laughs> yeah, like gotta, just take a breath. <laughs> it's okay. I don't have anything to plug. Oh, um, Emmy and I are going to do the Sonora um well, by the time you hear this, we will have done the Sonora um, navigation training this weekend. Ooh, cool. Um, yeah. And then um, Emmy's comment on the, because they posted like, ah, oh, there, you know, some ladies are joining us, the serious rally ladies or whatever. And, and Emmy's like, yay, can't wait to get lost. And I'm all, hey. <laughs> <laughs> she took a shot at you. That's right. So cool. <laughs> Come on. I can't wait to crash the car. Yeah, shots <laughs> fired. I will put her in a spot where she will wreck. <laughs> we're we're going very ill-equipped, so it'll be it'll be a nice um, test of our ability to wing it. Well, it's and, was yeah. a nice test of your ability. Yeah, was it. yeah, it was. was. Uh, but it, it will have been a will have been. <laughs> it, come back from it. Uh, if this is the last time you ever speak to me, you'll know where to find <laughs> in the Sonoran Desert. Yes. Oh. <laughs> for us there. <laughs> what are you driving? Uh, uh actually, it's going to be super throwback because we are going to be taking Squeaks Squeaks McGee, which is the um, Chevy Colorado um, Emmy's dad's uh, Chevy Colorado that we entered in the very first Rebel. Awesome. So, we're going to take that and uh, see how he does. He's a little even squeakier now. So. Squeakier now. Wouldn't be a Colorado if it didn't squeak. That's true. Same that that's shocks on it definitely squeak to high heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so great. Yeah. It's It's been a theme lately with shows we've had of, of people driving things slightly less equipped than they should for <laughs> long distance trips. But it, and at least we, we talked to Scott who, who did the Mongol rally and he did it in Nissan Micra, but like, the rally does that on purpose. So you then have to experience more of the places as you break down and fail on that your was way to Mongolia. Ill like ill-equipped. Yeah, Ill like that was inappropriate transportation. Oh. I'm so into it. Right? Yeah. Like it's that's like what I did. I took a Jaguar F Base SVR off-road last weekend. It was awesome. <laughs> Will you stop saying that? Jaguar is going to listen. Good. <laughs> well, they should know that they gotta get rid of that stupid. Bullshit air dam splitter thing. MPGs. 
Yeah, point one MPG is on a thing that is 550 horsepower. That's exactly what they're going for. I think, I think my van has either Five. 90 horsepower or 69. I, I tried to look it up earlier and I couldn't get a definite number. Sure. I thought it was 90, but then I looked and I'm like, oh no, the turbo diesel. <laughs> Sixty-nine. <laughs> like new? Yeah, yeah, that was new. So what yep. is it yeah. now? Forty-five. Now like Fifty. I've I've got more horsepower in like the little mini motorbikes we're gonna ride in Mongolia. <laughs> was, yeah. So that's yeah. still in the plan. It's still in the plan for September. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, we're gonna have to have another show about that. Oh yeah. Well, definitely. Mongolia September isn't Rebel like October. Uh, Emmy and I are not planning on doing the Rebel this year. Oh, um, really? We're doing the Sonora. Um, that is, to, when it was going to be in March, we were like, there's no way, but we'll do the training and we'll prep ourselves for next year. But they've moved the dates to October. So it's it's very oh, perfect. possible. Yeah. So Donar, do you know if you guys are going to be doing the Rebel in October? I don't know. When we ended the Rebel, this <laughs> said, never again, never again. <laughs> Goodbye. Um, but you, you kind of never know. We do it. We are looking at some other kinds of rallies to do and to compete in, but nothing is nailed down yet. So um, Don and I have both done it um, all six years. And mm -hmm. it's not like, oh, we're not learning anything, but like, I want, I want something new and something different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like everything that we've learned in, in the, those experiences you know, we could do, unless, unless Sedona, you want to do the two of us and we'll switch off driving. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So good. It'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> the navigator team. <laughs> Maybe switch days though, not like mid stage. <laughs> yeah. It seems like there's too much math going on to switch. Yeah, right. stage. So yeah, where yeah. would you right. go away? <laughs> yeah. That could be fun. Yeah. Lots more adventures to be had. So huh. yeah. All right. I'm well, I, know I'll be, I know I'll be back to the rebel for sure because it's such a great, it's a great thing. The, the one thing I want them to do that they haven't done yet is I need them to actually, I know they won't put extra people in vehicles. I need them to just record the footage, stick a GoPro in a vehicle with a, a battery that goes forever. I want to see what a team does in an entire day. Oh, I believe I have that footage. So I know. I, I was like, we've got some too. It's not for an entire day. That's yeah. You kind of forget about it. You're like, oh yeah. yeah. We need like thing you've ever seen. <laughs> it's so but boring. It's, it's boring. Like it's not boring to me. Oh, it's boring. very I'm so curious about it. Like it's just, we just need like a docu trial. Yeah, like, like, docu docu like some kind of, you know, like yeah. somebody has to sell a script. I'm along actually, along oh. with the book that we're about to write. Producer lady. Just hang on to that thought because <laughs> there, there are things that there are things in the works, nothing to do with me, but but I, I did actually think um, I wanted to collect all the footage that we've done over the six years and, and, and put it together um, to tell our, our team story. Because we, we uh, Emmy and I both competed together for all six years. Right. Same team. So we've got a lot of crazy footage and a lot of cursing, I'm sure. A lot of pinching our teeth in the car as we're going and That's making mistakes. And, saves time. You know. It's part of your blue yeah. really just splice together all of the curses. <laughs> That would be like an hour long, right? That's that's perfect entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Probably do like a half hour worth of just Emmy burping. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'd watch that. A lot of people would watch that. I know. <laughs> Emmy, Emmy probably would be thrilled. She'd she, she probably watch that. And, and how many times she said, I'm going to go check the bumper. Not <laughs> 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 to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm stealing that place. Um, you need to take the bumper. Uh, yeah, Ross point. has off-roading trips coming up, so that could be that's, that's very yeah. applicable. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna wrap it up. You can rate, review the show on Apple Podcasts. Over half of the show watches on Apple Podcasts. The other biggest chunk is from other, so I'm not quite sure. Like Spotify is pretty small, Podcast Addict is pretty small, Google Podcast is like the tiniest. But like, I don't know who mm -hmm. other is, but you guys are using it. And we're sure that cool. other isn't like some new podcast app thing. I don't know. Uh, our analytics are normally pretty good about telling us where it's from. It, that's just other. Um, you can like it, subscribe on YouTube. Uh, I'm trying new things on YouTube. I'm trying to see it more clicks there. We'll see if what I try is going to work or not. 
by the time this airs, it would have been new stuff for a while. So we'll see. Uh, Rebecca is at Rebecca Donaghy on Instagram. Sedona is Sedona Blinton on Instagram and team.wild.grace. Spell, yeah. spell the names for the listeners. All of it? Yeah. Oh, but definitely. Oh, they'll find them. Like, come okay. on. All right, we got to have right. listeners have some credit. Like, all right, all right. Donaghy's pretty easy. Blinton's. You got to find me like a checkpoint. Yeah. Blin- <laughs> Blinton is very easy. Like, yeah. Yeah, navigate to them. It'll be fine. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> also, they've both been on the show before. Like, uh, find their true. names. Like, it's you do have hard. a lot of new listeners, though. So. That's true. Mm-hmm. We do have some new listeners. Uh, you follow the Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the Real Hooniverse on Instagram. You can read our writing. See, I didn't fumble it this time. I literally, last three shows, I've messed up saying the words. You can read what we write. Like, just got it out. So, Hooniverse. Read, read. Yeah, Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV writer, everyday driver, and US News and World Report. I think I got them all. That's all. Uh, Ross is no, not like the one from Friends, and I'm at Overlanding Dad. And that's it. We've done a show. Ladies, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent, excellent show. And always a pleasure to have both of you. Thank you so much. Happy to be on. Dude, it's so entertaining. I love it. (laughs) I, this is one of those episodes I'm like, I'm sorry, listener and viewer. I don't care if you like it or not. I just want to talk to these people for a little longer. Like, it's fun. I know. <laughs> Usually we wrap up like a half hour ago. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, would, we would try to keep them shorter lately. So, no, not tonight. It's good. This one can go long. Yeah. Thank you for staying up for us.